Hi Rich, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel. And you recently did a video on 3126s. Get him on the bus! You were interested in putting one of these engines in a truck. I'm going to take this apart, I'm going to disconnect the transmission, and then we're going to send this straight to the machine shop. A new shirt with Marlene hanging out of our tree over top of our OBS. We got the F Tree Kitty. All right, so the M350 has been a while for an update, but we got a pile of stuff going on. But before you start any project, uh, it's best to do as much homework as you possibly can. Especially because we have two engines available to us. We have a school bus engine and an engine out of a Kodiak. And a lot of you guys mentioned we should get a hold of an expert like Josh from Adapt Ape. He works for Caterpillar, he knows these engines, he's got all the information available about these engines. So here's Josh. If you don't know who I am, I run the Adept Ape YouTube channel, and that channel is pretty much focused on Caterpillar diesel truck engines of course we also talk about just the diesel industry in general caterpillar some truck engine history i watched the video pretty good video and you reached out to me because you wanted to know maybe which was the best engine you gave me the serial numbers for both ones and i did a bunch of digging on each of them to find out what the actual rating is the dyno pull numbers from cat as far as which one's better i'm going to discuss that and uh you can go ahead and edit this however you want of course so this is some dyno information I was able to pull on the engine when it was new. The HEP, which is the newer engine, was 190 horsepower, 520 torque, and it was built in November of 2002 at the Greenville plant at Caterpillar. Now you can see that on the dyno it pulled 207. That's because a lot of times the advertised horsepower rating and the actual horsepower it'll produce are slightly different. Sometimes they're not though. Now let's talk about the 7AS. So this is the 7AS. It is an older engine. It was built in February of 1999. And it is actually a 250 horsepower, 660 torque rating. And you can see on the dyno it pulled 249 horsepower. So just picking from those two engines from their base horsepower ratings you would want to go with the 7as you have much more horsepower and a lot more torque you're talking 140 foot pounds of torque difference between the two now what about a re-rate what we're looking at here is an up rate ability chart from cat and this is for the hep serial number now this one you can see if you're looking at the the columns here you are the second from the left which is 190 horsepower 520 foot pounds of torque and in order to change horsepower, you kind of got to go through your parts list here and see what's compatible and what's not. Now, what's weird about this serial number range is that there's a break in between the 250 660 torque and the 250 800 torque. Legitimately, you cannot jump between rating families or emissions families, at least in the CAT system. So you would be limited to 250 horsepower, 660 torque on the HEP engine, no matter what you do component wise. Not only that, your current rating, you're already would need to change the turbo, it looks like, and change the injectors to go up much. So unless you're looking at spending a lot of money, I would say you're kind of locked in at that lower horsepower without changing the turbo and the injectors for the HEP. Now the 7AS, you're already in the middle of the family. You can see that you are at the 25660 rating. Now to go up, you would need to change some components. It looks like you would need to change the injectors initially, even to go up to the 250, 800 foot pounds of torque rating. So same horsepower, but more torque. And then you could go all the way up to 300, but you may need to change some other components to even do that. So from the information you could see there, even though the 7AS is a couple years older as far as the date of build on it, I would definitely go with that one just because it's already a much higher horsepower and higher torque rating engine. Of course, you could re-rate both of them, but re-rating is fairly expensive once you start looking at having to change injectors or the turbochargers. So I would stick with the 7AS. Not only that, it has the round top Huey pump. And in general, I would say that's a better engine overall 
than the square top one just due to the lower horsepower of the HEP serial number one and it most likely having the square top Huey pump style. Okay, start this old girl, see if she works. I think there's a Murphy switch here. Uh, I don't want to hit it right. Okay, hold on. So originally we were going to go with the engine from the school bus. The only issue with that is that it was extremely rusty and we'd have to replace a lot of components on that engine just to keep it reliable. Now it was more work to pull the engine out of the Kodiak but after talking with Josh, it was definitely necessary. So I went back and did get that engine running, but it sounded like crap. It would barely start on a warm day, and I don't think I had my camera on me. I just happened to be driving past the NR. So I went back, tried to get it running again, and it was so bad that I couldn't get it running. I think I'm gonna stop there. But it had the Allison MD3060 on it. When I put the batteries in, I could definitely tell that it was a six speed transmission because it got a manual upshift and downshift in an automatic. So I verified it was a six speed. I couldn't get it moving because the drive shaft was removed. So I don't know the shape of the transmission. Regardless, we needed the wiring harness, the computer, the turbo and the injectors from that engine along with the high pressure fuel pump. I figured VNR is gonna scrap this thing regardless, grab it, take it home. And between the two engines, we should be able to build one good, perfect engine. Because you know us, we can't leave things alone, even from factory and the customized parts. We need to customize our customized parts and our customized build because I am just a glutton for punishment. So here we go. Do it nicely. Sometimes we just don't want to. All right, well, there she is in all her glory. When I looked at this one originally, I read 185 horsepower, horsepower 186, but um, it says advanced ADV. 250. What it actually means is 186 kilowatt, which is 250 horse. This one's got a air compressor on it to run the air brakes and we don't need that, but we do need a hydro boost system for the brakes. So we need a pump that fits on the housing. I don't know if the pump off the bus will fit on this timing cover. So we might need the timing cover off the other one. And also we've got a uh, PTO pump off of the Allison. We don't need that, so we need the cover that covers up that plate. We can get those anywhere, but it's nice to just have it on our own. This is the 3060 DT, which is much larger than the 2000, but this is already a six speed. Um, talking to some people, we can't take the valve body out of this one and put it in the 2000. The 2000 is smaller. Uh, we'll see how this one fits in the truck first. Um, if it doesn't fit, then we'll look at getting a valve body and a TCM for the 2000 to make the four speed transmission into a six speed. They lock out two gears for the buses so that your kids can't do 160 miles an hour down the highway. We are going to disassemble this one uh, just now so that we can get it ready for the machine shop. So we'll take the time cover, the head, everything off. I want to inspect the head. Uh, I suspect there's something going on in the bottom end here. Oh, you can see that. A little piece of something. I can feel it between my fingers. Well, there's nothing in the oil pan. Oil pan looks good. Wait, 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 wait. Here it is. Oh, that's a zip tie. <laughs> there's the other piece of the zip tie. <laughs> sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. I think this is lucky. So I imagine that this engine is actually in pretty good shape. Why does cat use zip ties to hold their internals together? Hmm, the mystery continues. 
Ugh. I can feel, like it's not spun or anything, but I can feel a little bit of a groove here. See my finger kind of, my thumb kind of catching? Means this crank is no good. That's why we have two engines. This back one's actually in terrible shape. And an oil analysis would definitely show this. All that wear on the bearing, all of that would be in the oil and you would know instantly whether this is worth working on or not. The back bearing journal is uh, actually nicer than the front. See how my finger rides across nice with uh, my fingernail. No issues there, but either way, I don't think a polish will fix that, and I don't think we're gonna turn the crank. We'll just use the other one. I am going to button that back up again so I don't spill oil all over my floor, and then let's pull the head. Here we go. Okay, so once you strip the, the engine kind of down, it's really not that complicated. You got your oil coming in, your oil coming out. Uh, exhaust, nothing uh, to really see right away. The oil cooler here, this is an issue that I didn't address before. Uh, this gasket behind here apparently does uh, blow out between the clean oil and the unfiltered oil. So what happens then is the unfiltered oil goes to the Hubie system and we'll take out the injectors. So and I, I think there was a bulletin on that. Um, if there's an upgraded gasket, we would look at that. Definitely gonna pull that cooler off. Um, you can see the water in behind there that actually went to something in the truck to heat up something in the back. And then it came back to the rad house or this was the return, sorry. So um, that's none of our concern. We'll block that off and we'll block the, the rad off down below. Um, pulled the valve cover off. It is a little bit more sludgy <laughs> than I'd like. You don't want to see this kind of build up on the, um, especially on the injectors. Uh, looks like one clean one there and then they must have replaced one injector here. At some point that one is definitely newer than the other five. So cheap bastards didn't want to spend the other five grand to replace the other ones. They only opted for the 1000. But that's the way it goes. Uh, the Huey system on this side, this, I mentioned before that this line is the oil that feeds the Huey pump. And then this line goes into um, the rail. There's an update for this line. We'll try and get the filter for that one. Um, just very simple uh, sensors on the oil, intake temperature, coolant before and after the thermostat. We've got two cam sensor gears, which is odd. Um, but not a big deal. The compressor, you don't have to take the gear off in the front, so you can just take those two bolts off and the mount at the back, and then you can pull the whole compressor off, and the same with the Huey system. So unlike the Cummins where you gotta pull the gear off, you can take the whole gear with the Huey system, and the Huey and the compressor both are not timed, obviously. So uh, we'll pull the harness off, which really isn't that many sensors, and then we'll get into the head. So here we go. All right, back on our bus. Pretty neat, all the, just a couple coolant hoses. And then the entire loom for the bus goes in right here. So um, there was only one plug I couldn't get out. That bolt was stripped, but I think that is the wiring to the back of the bus for the lights. Um, a couple power ones, and then these are the plugs. We'll keep the harness all in one piece. I think the steering slides out. If not, we got a little bit more work to do, but should make short use of that. So, there we go. We unhooked everything from here and I left the cab alone. If I need to know where these wires go, um, they'll all end up over there for cruise control, throttle pedal, um, high idle, things like that. Um, we have that. There's a transmission controller. I believe the round one was for the transmission. And I wanted to take this home because I wanted to keep the hydro boost and the steering because um, as you can see, that nice two stroke Detroit over there is uh, just sitting there waiting for a home. This is a 6V71, I believe, that had the generator on it. We'll pull this off and that'll leave an SAE something or other bell housing that probably bolts up to this Eaton right here. So this is the other cat. 
that we stripped down and this one's no good. Um, this 8.3 is going in the combine and this transmission came behind it. So I think that's the same bell housing. So we should be able to unbolt this. I need to get a flywheel for it and a clutch. I don't think this flywheel will work, but that's a story for another day. But this frame is going to hold a two-stroke Detroit with the 10 speed Eaton and these frames are nice because all you do is unbolt the spring shackles and then slide that all the way forward to wherever you want your uh, spacing for your whatever we're going to put on top and then just cut the frame behind it. We're going to ignore this but that's a story for another day. Um, I wanted to be able to move this thing around and um, whatever body we have we'll put the hydro boost on it and make some sort of cool rat rod but that's that's further down the road you don't need to worry about that right now we're gonna worry about this the cat and look how, look how messy that looks but it's not so bad it's not so bad at all let me let me unhook some some wires I'd love to use this transmission because it's so much smaller than the MD 3060 the MD 3060 basically comes straight out here so um, that's a good good five inches anyway but this is only a four speed which is a problem I want six we do need this engine though um, because I imagine because it was detuned and maintained even though it's rusty the insides I imagine were serviced very proper by a fleet um, so we'll take the computer everything off uh, we have a choice between which head we want to use and then we're going to go through here so I'm going to take this apart I'm going to disconnect the transmission and then we're going to send this straight to the machine shop with everything attached minus the intake and the exhaust and all the wiring and then um, we're going to give the basket of other parts uh, that we tore off of the higher horsepower engine and send that over so he can use the best of what we've got and redo the injector so while he's looking at the engine rebuilding the engine we're in the shop with the C10 finishing that up so here we go well, the air filter looks nice and clean anyway so that's a good sign Okay, so pretty boring on this side. We're gonna get rid of this exhaust, get rid of this turbo, probably get rid of this alternator. Although it's a one wire, we'll probably keep that somewhere. The water pump here, these are, this is a pain. This water pump is driven by its own belt. So you gotta get rid of this to get this belt out of the way to change this one, it's kind of a pain. Uh, but that's kind of an afterthought. It's like, oh yeah, we need a water pump. This is the busy side. Uh, we're gonna be using that turbo because apparently it's bigger as well. Uh, we won't be using a fan, so I wasn't too careful or worried about that because we are going to be using electric fans. You can see how much space we lose um, according to the front of the, the pulley there. Um, we'll pull the exhaust off, we'll pull the transmission off. If we do use the other transmission, um, we will be using this parking brake uh, system. So this is a cable and it grabs your drive shaft. Um, which is a lot handier because these transmissions do not have a park in them. We'll pull the starter off, pull the computer off, fuel system off, and then we're good to go. Kitty's gonna help work on the cat. Right, kitty cat? Right, kitty cat? Oh yeah, there's a good kitty cat. Okay, so the turbo came off. All the holes look like they're covered in suit, so it looks like it's firing on all the cylinders, and it sounded like it was. I wasn't too worried about that. Um, I was worried about the timing cover, not that it's a big deal, but this is the round pump from the 99 and that hole lines up perfect and that one is off about half a hole and that one <laughs> is off altogether. Even though it fits in the timing cover and it would turn and all the lines work, I need to take the timing cover off the other one. So then the question is if that gear pump fits in the other timing cover. So pull that off, we'll check that out in the other pump. But now that it's a huge deal, but it's just more work. A few more hours, what's a few more hours, right? Okay, so we got it all stripped down. Um, quite a bit of scale yet, but it is coming off. Um, we'll dunk it, we'll put it in the hot tank and that will take a pile of stuff off. I think he's got an acid tank too, I don't know, anyway. Probably not gonna use this head. We are gonna use this block, not gonna use the pan. Um, we're not gonna use the water pump, not gonna use this, not gonna use the timing cover. So just 
a D-rated 190 horse block. And then the rest is all already taken apart. There's a wiring harness off of this engine and transmission. The turbo, the exhaust manifold, the front pulley, torque converter, flywheel, adapter. And most of the stuff we're gonna use is on this skid. I took this all apart already. This turbo manifold is in much better shape. The front pulley's not all war. Um, probably use some of this stuff. I don't know. Probably gonna get a new uh, high pressure pump while we're at it. Might as well just get fresh stuff because this truck wasn't running great. Uh, we'll get the other injectors tested and um, calibrated, I guess. Uh, the tips, just make sure that there's a nice spray pattern in there, and then we'll go from there. We're not using the compressor, um, but I can make sure that that's the same bolt pattern as the power steering pump. And then uh, pull the timing cover off the other one yet, and then off she goes to the machine shop. All right, we're at Northdown Machine. We got our 3126 here, and uh, you take good care of it. Oh yeah, real good care of it. <laughs> It's a little uh, dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because we're taking two engines and making one, we're taking the best of both that uh, we're bringing it here just to get all the clearances checked out and that leaves me time to build the truck and take the truck apart. We'll see what we can get into. <laughs> awesome, all right. Now, digging deeper into the engine, the engine from the Kodiak had some massive cylinder wear on number three and number four. Bad enough that you could almost cut your finger on the ring ridge. So, that got me thinking, why did that happen? If it had a cut in the intake after the air filter or just had a really poor air filter with holes in it, a lot of the sand and dirt and dust that that intake would suck up would get pointed directly at those two cylinders creating that access wear or it could have been injectors regardless um, we're going to take care of both problems we're going to get our injectors tested we're going to get them all flow rated and uh, calibrated properly and equally we might have to upgrade those injectors if we want to get our 300 horse and 800 foot pounds of torque but uh, also got me thinking about the intake. Now the intake is small because it works around, it's actually situated around the fuel filter. We're gonna go with a better fueling system that's gonna be remotely mounted with a uh, electric pump. So by moving the fuel filter, um, we can make a larger intake. I think that will distribute the air much evenly between the cylinders, which is better all the way around. And we're tossing around the idea if time and budget allows to get into hydrogen on demand. Hydrogen is complicated in the fact that um, there's a lot more moving parts than say propane injection or nitrous injection. We're gonna put nitrous oxide on our Duramax and we know that there's lots of videos on propane. So we wanna kind of experiment on the hydrogen and kind of stay up to date on that stuff. So building the larger intake because we spray the hydrogen into the intake, we'll distribute it between the cylinders better and reduce the risk for damage that we're gonna do. Because you know what? Um, <laughs> again, I like to overreach and make things a lot more complicated than <laughs> what they originally are, but it's for your benefit. So here we go.
All right, so we're here at Northtown Machine. This is Scott. How's it going? Um, Scott's actually done all of my work behind the scenes, but he's gotten a little better <laughs> to not be so camera shy. So yep. you rebuilt the, uh, the the 455 for the GTO. Yep. Uh, you did the Perkins head. You yep. do a lot of my Cummins heads. Yep. Every 24 valve Cummins, you get the head regardless because yep. those seats are gone. And if you want to see rebuilds that I've done in the shop, we've got the 5.9 rebuild and the Perkins that you can go back on. But uh, for this one, we're going to go a little bit deeper. So we're going to show you guys what's involved, where your hard-earned money goes, and how to make your engine as perfect as you can. What I mean by that is if we can save the pistons, don't replace the pistons. Don't like yep. when uh, you priced the kit from Cat and it was just the parts was over 10 grand. Yeah, yeah, it was like <laughs> nine ninety five hundred dollars or whatever. So that's Canadian. So I don't normally use Cat parts. I like the better quality parts. Oh, I shouldn't say that maybe. <laughs> okay, so so what parts are we using? Uh, all FP diesel. I primarily stick to FP diesel or mod which is Quivite. Okay. Um, whenever, depending on the price point of the customer. When you drop off an engine, I would really like to have it complete like you did. That way when I take it apart, nothing gets missed. I keep everything in very specific order. And even for my work orders, I know what processes have been completed to make sure you get the right engine. Right, right. It's probably easier to see all the Timmy's cups that you put yeah. the right bolts in. The, you, like you got yeah. them organized. If I give you a bag, you, it, it, yeah. that really adds to the time. And right? most of these engines, when they come apart, we know where the problem areas are. And I can't fully inspect it if you bring me a box full of parts like that there. Okay. <laughs> now we got kind of a unique situation because we took the 260 horse Kodiak apart because I couldn't get it running and I wanted to kind of, I didn't want to waste your time. So I figured there was something wrong with it. Yep. And I left the bus engine, which was 190 horse together. So you've got all your nuts and bolts in that. So where do you go from here? Depending when it comes in, how bad it really is, how uh, covered in oil, usually diesel is the worst of the worst. Yep. Um, we'll tear it apart, hot tank it in our giant jet wash. Okay. Uh, runs about 180 degrees. And then after that, it usually goes into a caustic dip to just help us. I don't like being dirty. So as you can tell, my hands in the piston picture. Uh, so it goes into a caustic dip and that's where I'll caustic dip everything so that we can start with a good product to start doing our testing on, checking guides, checking ring grooves, checking bore sizes, cranks, the whole nine yards. Okay, so checking the bore on the cylinders, pretty straightforward, straightforward. bore gauge, yep. measure the bottom, measure the top, or yep. pass the ring ridge, but there's no there's no ridge on that? No ridge, this thing is uh, absolutely beautiful. Nice. Uh, it's all, all within the specs. It's almost like it was a rebuild engine before it came here. Uh, yeah, things mint, we'll just add our touches to it. Yeah, other than being a little rusty, that yeah. is the issue with the 3126, it's a dry sleeve. So if the bore is shot, you're kind of screwed, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So we're, we're lucky. Um, I don't like the idea of only the four head bolts per per cylinder, but have you ever had head issues? They're pretty big bolts. Okay. So I d I've never had major issues. I've had one customer with the same engine uh, going from a twin turbo to a single turbo. Okay. Uh, and did have issues head gasket? head gasket, Okay. but he was also running mass pressure okay. and bigger turbo. So. Okay, yeah, that is a nice big bolt. Yeah. All right, and it's a massive head too, so. Yeah, I don't, uh, you're just, you're being very calm. Yeah. Power. So I don't, I don't foresee any problems, uh, especially with a decked block and a decked head, uh, you should get a long life out of it. Perfect. We're gonna change uh, piston rings. Yep. We'll take the pistons all apart, double check all the bushings, check the big ends of the rods. So big ends, small ends, check the bushings. Then we'll prep and probably ultrasonic clean uh, the pistons to clean all the ring grooves, everything for you. Like these things look brand new. Even the skirt coating is still on them. Rod bearings, main bearings, full gasket set. Uh, cam bearings? Cam bearings. I'm pretty sure there's no frost plugs in it. Okay. And then uh, the only other thing that I have heard through the grapevine is that these bolts right here is what causes the issue. Oh, another failure part. Yeah. So okay. supposedly if they're... Uh, uh, removed and then retorqued up. Uh, if you don't replace these bolts, they have a, a problem of snapping and breaking off, which falls into the cam journals because uh, they ride up right at the same level as the cam. And when they break, they fall in and chew everything up. Make a nice big mess. Yes. Okay. So as far as so I know, that's the Achilles heel, like the dowel pin on a car. Yes. All right. Yeah. Every engine has it, but every, this engine's beautiful. So we, that's the crank right there. The crank uh, will be Magnaflux just in case. You never had any running issues with this. No. But every crank, uh, we Magnaflux every crank. Hot tank, it's already been hot tanked. And it goes into a big Magnaflux machine. So we check for radial and horizontal cracks. A big spot there, a big spot here. Just from water sitting. 
when we did take the engine apart, there was a fair amount of water that came out of it. So when it's been sitting, the water must have got into it somehow. Okay. Uh, not a big issue. We'll have to remagnify it, make sure it is good, which it will be. Uh, we'll polish it, and we'll polish that with a with a cork uh, crank polishing belt, and then you'll be rocking. Nice. So this is our head, and what do you do to the head after the engine is disassembled? This will get usually gets put into a caustic tank for a while, same as the block. Uh, then once that comes apart, it gets, it gets pressure tested just to make sure we don't have any cracks uh, in the coolant system. Sometimes we have full plates that do it, and then, or we have our machine that blocks off every passage. Okay. And it adds air to the system, and then we check everything. A lot of check for cracks in the seats, crack between cylinder walls, uh, and just to make sure it is 100%. Okay. You get out there and then you have a leak. Yeah. And now you throw a bunch of money into <laughs> that's something. That's nice. Well, the worst is the paint because uh, you crack the paint I mean, oh, as soon as you uh, take stuff <laughs> apart again. Um, the, does the 3126 have issues with the seats like the 24 valves do? Nope. No? Nope. So the seats look good. You're going to grind them? Yeah. As long as our depths, will, so now what we'll do is we'll check all the guides. Uh, we'll put our pilots in, mark the pilots of where it falls, check with a mic to make sure that the guides are within specs. If they're within specs, then we leave them. Uh, this one we've already checked and all the guides are without a specs. So we'll be placing all the guides. Okay. Uh, and then what we do is we deck the block and then depending if we get new valves or whatever, we reset the valve protrusion or recession, whatever that particular model has. We reset all those so that we're within perfect specs. Right, because if you just grind a bunch off the valves and off the seats, <laughs> if somebody's done it before, yep. you're gonna drop your compression, it's gonna run like guys. And if it's not within specs, then we pull the seats out and put new seats in. Awesome. All right, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so that's it for our F-350 update. Um, I'm going to get back into the shop and start pulling the truck apart um, slowly while Scott is working on our engine. Uh, we're still finishing up other projects, but um, there is lots of stuff happening. Even if you don't see the videos, this is over the course of uh, probably six weeks that, that uh, all this footage is from. And we all know you're not getting what you want for Christmas. So head to the merch store. We got uh, a new shirt with Marlene hanging out of our tree over top of our OBS. We got the F tree kitty. Um, so Aaron designed this special shirt with a cat on it. So Merry Christmas and um, remember if you're not filthy then uh, get out there and do something. Here we go.